Attila Total War is one of my favourite Total Wars out there, by a fair bit. Currently, I would rank it as my third favourite, just below Medieval 2 and Rome 1. Although I know I am not alone with that opinion, I know I'm not exactly full of supporters who agree, either. Today's video, and also Wednesday's video, I want to explain why I love this game so much, as it does two things that I really care about, and perfectly. Today we will focus on the mood of the game. I've gone into detail before about the intro for Barbarian Invasion, how it sets you up perfectly for what is about to come. Such as seeing the barbarian lead the way, the gloomy atmosphere at night, the hordes having siege equipment and crossing the river, and the Hunnic cavalry mirroring the Roman cavalry in the base game opener. Barbarian Invasion, I said, is my favourite DLC because it sets the mood perfectly. Although there's other important features for the game, to me and getting me invested, this is an important detail, which does often make or break a title. I also rank Napoleon highly for similar reasons. The epic intro works so well and when playing, I feel like I am in Napoleon's position. And opposite, when I load into Rome 2 Total War as, let's say, Rome, I don't get that feeling, and I have never been a big Rome 2 fan. In fact, I would say it's probably one of the worst, in my opinion. Now, all factions have good intros in Rome 1 Total War. Each Roman house outlying the beliefs and politics of their family, but one of my favourite faction intro scenes, because of how it handles this, is the Rome Total War Carthage intro. The music alongside the images perfectly sets you up for this part of the world. Then this is followed by the croaky fearful voice of a Carthaginian visionary. He talks about the screaming of the children and a terrible vision, foreshadowing the doom that historically is just about to strike the Empire. Last night, the crying of the children kept me awake, and I had a terrible vision. I saw the fall of our city, bleached bones under a harsh sun. Carthage, gone. The intro goes on to show the unique units you will be using and talks briefly about merchants reaching all corners of the world. This gives you some backing and familiarity to your faction before the game has even begun. He then goes on to describe his faction as the envy of lesser people which explains to the player the reason why others may wish to bring your faction down, again adding more flavour and context. He explains that other powers have been telling terrible lies about Carthage, which works well with the constant references of screaming children, as it is believed the Romans propagandised them as child sacrificers. And then it ends with a line that just completes it all. And I think the children will be quiet tonight. They say a line that really could have so many meanings. Yes, it could be a child sacrifice reference, it could be a Carthage has won, we can sleep safe and sound, or it could be Carthage is about to get sacked and the children slaughtered in the night. Now, let's compare this to Rome 2. 
Your possessions are divided. You must secure additional territory to ensure their protection and to establish your faction as the supreme Mediterranean power. Carthage will prevail. You see, like, what is that? The most boring narrator there is. Talking about nothing, really. His mouth flopping up and down like a fish. Oh, but at least we get a wall of text before we load in. Time after time again with Rome too. Cutting corners, cheaping out. This is what happens when you rush the development. Now, I don't blame CA at all, I usually never do, it's all directed to the publisher, Sega, who rushed them and forced this game out too early. But man, Rome 2 should have been godly, but they were forced to cut back to fit the schedule. It's because of this that Attila lacked love and attention. It's because of this that Warhammer has soared instead and is taking over all of the DLC and developers' time, it seems. It's because of this that historical titles are not as strong as they should be. Many of you like Rome 2 now, and I must say it is better, but whenever I look at it, I cannot help but see wasted potential. So much potential wasted, and nothing in life makes me angrier to see than that. And you can clearly see it here when it comes to setting the mood, as it gives you nothing at all to go off. Anywho, setting the mood for me is incredibly important, and Attila, like Barbarian Invasion, does this brilliantly. Starting the intro with... is the perfect way to do it. The description of it being the end days, showing the world burning with the eerie music, prepares you for a fall, not a rise. Again, notice the colours. Barbarian Invasion loved to show off the orange glow of torches in the night. Attila does the same. The frequent images of Attila behind fire, and in one case, shoving his hand into it, introduces you to the main character of the game in a cool and epic, symbolic way. But it does not stop there. Each faction intro sets you up for that nation. As the campaign goes through, it continues to add these cutscenes, Delving deeper, slowly, enticing a gradual rise in fear into you. Throughout the entire game, up until Attila, the main man, arrives on the scene. Like, just look at the use of imagery here. Snow, in Egypt, that is how turned on its head this world is. This is why you must fear. Egypt and seeing it snow in Egypt does hit close to home. You know this place, you know this weather, but seeing the two together like this is such a weird sight. The gods had abandoned Rome and hell had risen. Okay, and what do we get from Rome 2? Wall of text, fish mouth, and whatever. This is... Now, Attila is not without its problems, which is also a real shame. Attila really could have been the number one, but it is lacking in some areas that pull it down. 
Those will be discussed more on Wednesday, as I explained point two, but overall, this here deserved its own video. Setting the mood is so incredibly important for a campaign, and for me, it's a big decider in whether I want to play it or not. Anyway, I have been Melkor, let me know if you agree or disagree. Subscribe to get notified of the next and final part of this, or any other video of mine. I upload daily. Share this video with anyone else you think may find it interesting. Really helps me grow and makes these in-depth videos much more worthwhile. But for now, until tomorrow's video, goodbye.